simple phase of machine learning, we have seen quite a bit of theory. First class, we have looked at generic ensemble theory and then we have looked at some advanced boosting algorithm. So, if you have not watched these videos, I recommend at least watch the first video. You will understand what we are trying to do over here much better. So, we start with our usual housekeeping and we are using the same platform like Kaggle over here. My notebook is public. This will be given in your YouTube video description, which you can edit and fork and play around. Okay, so let's now import the data. So we are using importing the normal libraries and we are using read CSV to read a data set called as Sona. Okay, so what this actually data set is all about, this is a classification data set and there is sonar wave which is being, you know, which is being thrown and if it is getting reflected by a rock, you can understand that or if it is getting reflected by a mine, you can understand that too. So basically it is a classification problem based on the signal characteristics, you will classify whether it is a rock or whether it is a mine. Now let's look at how this data set looks like. So it has five rows and 61 columns and there are uh, attribute up to attribute 60. The last one is class. R indicates rock, what I was talking about. Let's look a little bit closely about this. Let's look at some of the statistical properties. Do you remember how to do that? Okay, your dataset name is sonar, so you'll just go type sonar and you will type describe. Okay, and here you go. So let's look at how it looks like. So it gives quite a few statistical parameters about it. It talks about the count, the mean, the standard deviation, minimum value, quartile one, median, quartile three, like this. Okay. Let's go further ahead and we are creating an empty data frame over here. So what we intend to do is we intend to store the classifier name and the accuracy that we are getting there. So this is an empty data frame. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to create your training set and testing set. So if you see here, you ha we have imported train test split and we are splitting it into X and Y. So X is your independent variables and Y is the target variable. And we are using this method called as ILOC index location, which takes two inputs. One is a row index and another is a column index. So the first part before colon, we don't mention here anything. That means we will include all the rows. And 0 to 60 and 60, this may be a little bit confusing. You may think 60 is going in both places. However, if you remember about Python ranges, it doesn't include, include the upper value. That means when you say 0 colon 60, it goes from 0 to 59. Okay, so let's run this quickly. All right, now if you know the basic motivation of ensemble, what we want to test, what is our experiment goal, we want to see different classifiers and we want to see if we, them, we add them and make them vote by majority whether my classification accuracy improves. So that is our question number one, design question one. So what for that, what we do is we are going to use three classifiers, logistic regression, support vector classifier and k nearest neighbor. All these theories we have covered earlier. In case you want to go back and watch, you are more than welcome to do that. Okay, so now what we do is initially we just create or initialize these three classifiers that we talked about. Logistic regression, k-nearest table, and support vector classifier. Now what we need to do? We need to actually use a ensemble. So for that actually we have, imp uh, we have imported this voting classifier from sklearn.ensemble. And this takes two parameters, two important parameters. First parameters is estimators. Estimators means the models that are going to participate in the voting. And then you are going to tell how they are going to vote, whether it is going to be a hard vote or it is going to be a soft vote. 
okay so the difference between soft and hard is when you are doing a hard voting you are actually going to the class level seeing what is the majority vote and then you are predicting while you are doing a soft voting you are not going at the class level you are going at the, pro uh, the probability level you are summing up the probability across all classes whichever class gets max you are assigning it to that class and this LR, KN, and SVC are, doesn't make any difference. These are just string placeholders. You can change it at your will. So let's run this. I don't need to run this one. Let's remove this. This was for some housekeeping. Yeah. So let's run this now. And your models are trained. Now let's go and test your ensemble. So what we are going to do over here is first we are going to fit your hard vote classifier then soft vote classifier and then what we are going to do is we are going to import accuracy score so we can check accuracy score on the testing data set for each one of them. Okay so how many combine, how many classifiers are there? Total of five. You have your logistic, KNN, SVM and the two ensemble. So you fit them, you predict them and then you, you print the name of the classifier and its corresponding accuracy. These are the housekeeping that we are doing to add this to a data frame. Let's run this. Okay, so we see the results. Logistic was 80.7%, KNN 78.8%, SBC pretty bad 69.23. However, look at voting classifier. You have got a 82.69, almost a 2% improvement from the best classifier. Not the worst, but the best. And if you have used soft voting, look at the magic happening, right? There is another increase of 6% almost, right? So that's a huge increase that you are getting through Ensemble. Okay, but how do I differentiate these two, uh, these two voting classifiers? This we are keeping at DF. Let's look at how my df looks at looks like let's look at df dot i at zero zero let's look at what we have here so this is your voting classifier and i'm sure this is the soft voting one so let's check that column two yes so this is the soft so i just changed this description to soft otherwise when I plot, I will not be able to identify or distinguish these two classifier results. Okay, let's go ahead and now let's go to, so this was a case when the classifiers were different. But if you remember, when we discussed about bagging and random forest, we looked at one particular classifiers, which is the decision tree draws linear boundaries and you know find regions a weak learner and how they can be added through both bagging and random forest okay so let's first just run one decision tree you import decision tree classifier you initialize it you fit it you predict it and then finally print the accuracy score accuracy score is around 71.15 so let's go back it is not as good as logistic or KNN. It is little better than SVC. Okay. Do we have much hope improving this decision tree? Let's see. Okay. But before that, let's add the result of decision tree over here. Okay. Now let's go and go at bagging. So if you remember in bagging, we are creating different samples from the training and then we were adding different classifiers or training different decision trees on them and then finally we were adding them up through majority voting some of the things that you can look at is an estimator means 500 so that means actually you are bagging 500 decision trees and max sample is 120s if you remember bootstrap sample go go and revise the theory uh, then you are setting the sample size that your bootstrap samples will not increase 120 Okay, so this is how you have taken bagging classifier from Ensemble, you have initialized it, you are fitting it, and then let's look at the result. You could see the results earlier itself, so it is 
almost increased by 9.5%. Okay, so that's huge. Let's add this result again to our data frame. Okay, now let's come to random forest. So in random forest also, it is pretty, pretty much like bagging classifier. So you are mentioning the estimators. We have also mentioned max leaf node. So how many leaf nodes you can have at maximum? And then we are running that and fitting this. So let's do that. And you will see that even over bagging classifier, there is an improvement of around 6%. So it was 80.76. Now you are at 86.53 quite a big improvement isn't it let's add these also all right now as we do let's look at effect of some of the parameters so here the parameter i am going to look at is the max leaf nodes that a random forest is going to have okay so as you increase max leaf nodes the complexity of your model actually goes up and it can give you better results okay so let's run this and see what is happening so we are simply what we are doing is we have created a range which goes from 5 5 10 15 20 that way and this we are we are taking in a variable k and iterating this range okay and so what is happening is that you are training random forest classifiers every time with different number of max leaf nodes it starts from 5 goes to 10 and actually, if you think 5 to 60, 60 being not inclusive, we will have 11 combinations. So we have created an empty array where I will store the accuracy of these 11 different random classifier models. Okay, let's run this. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Can you tell me why? First of all, random forest classifier itself is building 500 decision trees. And this we are doing in a loop of 11 times, okay? So while this is being run, it is actually training 5,500 decision trees, okay? But we have got the result. Now what we are going to do is we are going to simply plot, plot it, plot against the maximum number of leaves and also the accuracy that we are getting. Let's look at the plot now. All right. So if you see that the accuracy actually increased around maybe 15, touched 86.5, and from there it is flat. So this, these are the ways you can actually tune and find out optimal parameters of your model. Okay. Now let's go ahead and give some name to the columns that I was or uh, name to the data frame that I was using. So first was the type of the classifier and then we had what accuracy we have achieved. Okay, so then we are take, uh, plotting this data frame with a horizontal bar. Okay, so let's look at the chart now. All right, so if you see that actually your soft voting classifier has given best result followed by your random forest classifier, bagging classifier, logistic regression individually has done not too bad. So you, these are your individual classifiers if you see, okay? And, and you can see that there is a quite a lot of improvement when you ensemble them, okay? So that's the beauty and magic of ensembling. Hope you have understood the kernel and I will highly encourage you run it change it, do some experiments, add some other data sets and try out. As usual, feel free to put your questions on the comment section. We will try to go through all of them and answer. Thank you very much for watching this video.